We're going to go over how to stain and paint your project when you are in the wood shop. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to paint the project. So you can see we've added a uh, tarp to the top of this table over here and that's where all the staining and painting will need to happen. So this tarp will stay here on this table for the rest of the year and again that's where you need to do all of your staining and painting. So these two pieces of wood are going to be my examples projects. And I'm going to paint one and stain one. So the first thing you'll want to do, just like when you're spray painting, is walk over here and get a paper towel. Now since I've got one for stain and one for paint, I'm going to need two paper towels. And put your project on the paper towel. Now with the way this tarp looks, Right now, you're thinking, well, we probably don't need a paper towel because it's perfectly clean. And that's because it's brand new. I just bought it yesterday. But as this semester goes on, people are going to spill paint and stain, and people are going to make a mess over here, and they're going to put too much on their project, and it's going to run all over the tarp. And so that's why you want to make sure that you put your project on a paper towel. Because once there's a bunch of stain and paint getting on the tarp here, then if you set your project down and the paint's wet, it's going to get all over your project. And I see it happen all the time. People just set their project down, don't realize there's wet paint or stain on the tarp, and then they're upset because there's stuff all over their project. you got to put a paper towel down first to protect your project. All right, so we're going to paint first. So the first thing I'm going to do is walk over here. By the pencil sharpener, you will find this can. It says paint brushes, and that's where you will find paint brushes. Okay, we've got bigger ones like this, and then if you want to do some small detail work, we've got smaller ones like that. So I'm going to take one of the bigger paint brushes. Now this cabinet right here is where we keep all of our brush paint. The majority of it has enough paint on the outside that you can tell what color it is pretty easily. Some of it you might have to pop open in order to see the color, but for the majority of it, you can see the paint on the outside of it and figure out what color it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint, we'll just say orange. So I'll grab the orange here. You can tell there's orange all over it, so that's how I know. Now, one thing I'll say, some of these cans, as you can see this one, uh, students have hit way too hard with the mallet when they try to close it and have crushed the can. And there is no reason at all that you should ever be hitting a paint can or a stain can so hard that you're smashing it. I've been painting and staining for 25 years and I've never once dented a can by hitting it too hard with the mallet. This is from kids who just don't care at all trying to be funny and smashing this paint can in and now it's going to make it the paint dry out and get all gross and be wasted and I'll have to buy new paint and waste all the old paint which is a complete waste of money so don't do this if you use a can that's already dented you can see it's not going to get a good seal on it you're just going to have to close it up the best you can but like this can right here has not been dented at all so you can get a good seal on it and this paint's going to last for a long time and not have to be wasted so I'm going to take the paint over here to the paint table. Now just like with the spray paint, you'll want to make sure that you shake this paint up really, really good. When I shake the paint, I would recommend two hands for you, but I've got one hand on the phone. But you notice how I've got my thumb over the lid. If you just grab it like this and start shaking, and if that can, if the lid does not have a good seal to the can, that lid's going to come flying off and paint's going to go everywhere. I see it happen all the time. And you can look on the floor and see places where people have spilled paint on our floor because they didn't, uh, they weren't careful enough. And it gets all over your clothes too. I've seen people dump a lot of paint all over their shirts, their pants, their shoes, because they didn't do the simple thing of holding the lid closed. So again, you'd want to have two hands on here 
which I really can't do, but you'll put two hands on there, shake it up really good. All right, once you've got it shaken up, one of the tools that will be on this table is a flathead screwdriver used for opening up paint and stain. You'll also see that there's some plastic gloves, and these are the rags for staining, and then this is the mallet used for closing it up. So when I go to open the paint, I'm going to put my screwdriver between the lid and the can right here. And I'm going to pull back so that it pops up. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do that a few more times until the lid comes off. Notice I'm not just staying here and prying back as hard as I can until the lid comes flying off and goes up in the air and makes a giant mess. Turn it, pull just a little bit up. Keep doing that until you've got the lid all the way off. Always check and make sure that the paint looks like it's in decent shape. If it's not mixed up, if it's not one uniform color, you either need to mix it better or you need to ask me if it's maybe gone bad. So I'm gonna get some paint on my brush here. You don't wanna be dripping paint all over the place. See, this is what people do. They have these drips of paint and then they go to brush their project and it gets all over the tarp and makes a giant mess. What you should do is you scrape a little bit of it off on the edge of your can right here and then look, you're not dripping everywhere. You don't want to scrape it off here because that's where the lid is going to go. You want to scrape it off on the inside right here. Don't scrape all of it off or you won't be having any paint to put on your project. Just scrape the end off so that it's not dripping everywhere. When you go to paint your project, the, best, the way to get the best uh, results is you want to go with the grain, just like when you're sanding. So you see the lines in the wood? That's the grain. They're going across. So when I paint, I'm going to paint across like this. Notice on the edges, I start here and I go towards the edge like this. Get a little bit more paint. I'm not gonna let it drip all over the place. I'm gonna scrape a little bit of it off so it's not dripping. Okay, I'm gonna do this edge. You don't start at the edge and go like this because if you do that, watch. And then you look over here on the edge and you've got this giant glob of paint on the edge. That's going to look really junky. So what you do instead is you start near the edge, but go towards the edge like this until you get those edges done. Get a little bit more paint on here, scrape off the end, not dripping everywhere, and finish painting my project. Now obviously your project won't move all over the place because you'll hold the paper towel with your other hand. Now if you have holes like this, you can take your paintbrush and kind of dab it down into the hole like that the best you can. All right, if you want to do the edge, you can do it like this. It's really difficult to do one-handed. Maybe if I put this back behind it, it won't move quite so much. You can do it like this, or you can take your project and tip it up, hold it with your other hand, and then paint like so. Notice again, I'm working from the middle and going towards the edges, not working from the edge and going towards the middle. And that way I won't end up with these giant globs of paint. When you're done painting the entire thing, Oh, no, I didn't want that to happen. That's why you should have a second hand. When you're done painting the entire thing, just like when you spray paint, you're going to pick up the paper towel with two hands, take it over to your locker, slide it off into the locker to let it dry. Just like with spray paint, you multiple light coats is going to work way better than one super thick coat that never dries and will just look gooey or gummy and will always feel gross. You want light coats of paint. 